Some female college students believe that they have to answer, or they have the answer, I should say, to curbing campus date rape. Let sororities do the hosting of the parties. Because campus sex assault has been such a hot topic, we've talked about it here since that Rolling Stone article falsely reported on that alleged gang rape at the University of Virginia, that frat party. Well, that touched off big protests on campus before the magazine eventually retracted its story. But female students are telling the New York Times that letting women host the parties would give them some home court advantage, allowing them to set the rules, like which areas of the house are off limits and what goes in the punch. But some experts doubt that that would actually lead to a significant reduction in campus assaults, and they warn that it could actually backfire, leading to more risky behavior. All right, I want to go to you first on this, Rachel. I was in a sorority, so I can see the benefits of having, as these girls put it, the home court advantage, because if you're going to get drunk and pass out, you can do it in your own room. You usually have a roommate around, and there's a lot of female eyes watching. Um, thoughts on this one? Okay, so I have a teenage daughter, um, so I have thought about the idea of dropping her off at a uh, college or university, and it makes me very nervous. I can tell you that the first thing I'm going to tell her as she walks out the door is that if you drink, it's dangerous, and it makes you vulnerable to date rape or gang rape in some cases. And so I think the false security message that this sends to young women that somehow if you're in your own sorority house, this is not going to happen to you, I think is precisely the wrong message. And I think we need to tell them it's not the location, it's the booze. Now, is it a false sense of security, though, or is it just women stepping up? Because these are girls proposing this, sorority girls proposing this, saying, look, we want to take some control back, which I actually think when we've argued this, Kennedy, yes. they've said that we are justifying rape because women You're shouldn't have to be responsible. Women. We're trying You're to be responsible. Justifying empowerment. I mean, there, there are a number of reasons. What a paternalistic, sexist, misogynistic system that only lets parties happen at male fraternities. You know, where you're going to have sleeping porches, where, where they control all the rules of engagement. If you want to have dry houses, that's fine. If you want to have sororities that have zero alcohol and zero parties, I think that's fantastic. You're going to find a lot of young women who are smart and self-assured and are very serious about academia that want to party there or at least, you know, attend those sororities. But then the others, you're going to have clean sheets. You're going to have better drinks. You're going to have a better aesthetic. And you're going to have your girlfriends there to back you up to make sure you don't back yourself into mm -hmm. a horrible situation. How does it work? Is it like you're saying the, the universities tell the, 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 the fraternities you can't have it? It no, has so to we, only happen at the sorority? We would have a social schedule. And to Typically, it was set by the social chairs and fraternities, and they had them too, and they would work together. But most of the parties, I will say, were at the fraternities, yeah. Stephen Hayes. Rarely did we have anything. I think we had like a cocktail hour at our sorority one time. Now, this isn't saying that it would prevent it altogether, because, of course, girls can bring guys back to their room if their roommate's away. Things can happen. And look, you can bring drugs and booze anywhere you want to spike a punch or into a girl's right. room. So this isn't foolproof. It's just a different idea. Yeah, I don't have any problem with this, honestly. I went to school at DePaul University. It's very Greek. It's like 85% Greek. Mm -hmm. And the sororities were not allowed to have alcohol. And, and as I recall, men were not allowed to go on the on the, the sleeping floors with the women. Look, I, I think it's fine to allow sororities to have that. I'm generally pro-beer as, as a general proposition. It's a good position. But I think the way, I think the way to handle the, self, the sex assault issue is to take it out of the hands of the university. Take it, give it to yes. law enforcement. Yeah. Have them punish. Have, have the, the authorities take control of the situation. Have them punish punish the offenders, raise the punishment on the offenders if you want to send a message. And I think uh, you'd, you'd go a long way to, to solving the problem if you took it away from mm -hmm. the universities. I'm pro-vodka. Harris, quick thoughts? Uh, well, I'm happy for both of you for being <laughs> pro-beer and pro-vodka. Um, yeah, I, I think it's about really what's happening to the body and less about location. I like the idea of women sticking together. I think that we should travel in groups and pairs and whatever, as we're always told, in situations where we could be vulnerable. But whether it's at a sorority or fraternity, the message here is when you over imbibe, mm -hmm. yep. stuff happens. Yeah. And, yep. and that's a conversation that we as parents need to have with our kids as we send them off. Amen. Both and girls and boys. The measles epidemic growing in one state, and now we're learning dozens of students had to be sent home from school once officials found out that they had not been vaccinated for the illness. We'll have more on that. And while there's much speculation about Mitt Romney taking another crack at the White House, one former presidential candidate's daughter is offering him some advice by saying, Mitt, don't do it for your family.
Each of these food boxes represents a gift of life for people here in Israel who are in desperate need. These are very difficult times for Israel and the Jewish people as the government spends more and more of its resources for battling terrorism. Every week more and more people come and you can see the desperation for food. This $25 food box will provide one desperately needy family here in Israel with food, with hope, and with a note inside each of these saying that it's from Christians and Jews in America who seek to bless them. Israel and its people need your help now. You can make a life-changing difference by calling and saying that you will give a $25 food box to help a family in need in Israel. Thank you and God bless you for your support. Release the magic. Candy Crush Soda. Download now. It's Empire Today's huge $99 room sale. Carpet, hardwood, and laminate, $99 a room. When you pay for padding and installation. 800 to Today. Rand Paul on the record. The senator fires back at the president's speech. Plus an exclusive look at Sergeant Tamarisi at the State of the Union tonight. Got tight quarters. Bob's got the fix. My Hudson storage bed is only $7.99. Six roomy drawers make for loads of storage in the footprint of a queen size bed. No foundation needed. It works with a mattress only. And with a rich pecan finish and slightly distressed look, you don't have to give up style for functionality. Need more storage? Got a little extra room? Add the dresser and mirror and get it all for $13.99. No phony sales or gimmick. Just untouchable value. Think you have the fastest internet? Think again. This is Xfinity. This is your current internet provider. Which do you think is going to download faster? I'm going to go with what I know. Ready? <laughs> yes. Download. Wow. Xfinity is way faster. That's not even fair. And we're done. I'm going to go. I may have to switch to Xfinity. Don't let your internet slow you down. Switch to Xfinity Internet from Comcast for $29.99 a month for 12 months. See for yourself. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit Comcast.com today. Two yearly physicals down. Martha and Mildred are good to go. Here's your invoice, ladies. A few stops later and it looks like Big Ollie is on the mend. It might not seem that glamorous having an old pickup truck for an office or filling your days looking down the south end of a heifer, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, look at that. I had my best month ever and earned a shiny new office upgrade. I run on QuickBooks. That's how I own it. Think you have the fastest internet? Think again. This is Xfinity. This is your current internet provider. Which do you think is going to download faster? I'm going to go with what I know. Ready? <laughs> yes. Download. Wow. Xfinity is way faster. That's not even fair. And we're done. I'm going to go. I may have to switch to Xfinity. Don't let your internet slow you down. Switch to Xfinity Internet from Comcast for $29.99 a month for 12 months. See for yourself. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit Comcast.com today. Well, more outnumbered in just a moment. We can't wait. First, though, John Scott with what's coming up in the second hour of Happening Now. Hey, John. Hi, Harris. France is charging four terror suspects in relation to the terror attacks that left 17 dead in and around Paris as that country dramatically expands its own war on terror. Our Kitty Logan reports live. A measles outbreak continues spreading in Southern California. Some high school students actually being sent home to try to stop the spread of the illness. But there is growing evidence that parents who refuse to vaccinate their kids might be at least in part to blame for the spread. Our panel weighs in on what we can do to stop the spread of once eradicated diseases. Stocks are up slightly right now. Gas prices continue to fall. That, of course, is good news for consumers, but the news not necessarily so great for the oil sector, where falling prices are beginning to have an impact on jobs here in the U.S. We will have an update. And Stephen Hayes, you're my hero. Aw, how sweet is that? Well, you know what? When our show's over, we're not going anywhere. We're going to sit right here in the dark on the couch and watch you. Uh, Absolutely right. Excellent. <laughs> like I appreciate day, that, Harris. Harris. Thanks. We'll see you in a few.
Meghan McCain, the daughter of Senator and former presidential candidate John McCain, has some advice for Mitt Romney. She's urging him not to run for president again for his family's sake. McCain, making the comments in a recent op-ed in the Washington Post, she writes about how helping her father run multiple times was the hardest thing she's ever done and how hurtful the rejection was. Saying, those of us who've watched our parents be rejected by the American public more than once, we make up a weird, lonely island of political misfit toys. Aww. And when I think about what that might, what they might go through again, I shudder. I like Mick Romney, and I like his wife and children, but take it from someone who knows, being the direct spawn of a presidential nominee is arduous and excruciatingly public. Wow. Andrea? Harris, what do you guys think? You know what's interesting? Um, she is just delightful, by the way. And when you see her with her dad, I mean, he's helping her take her pictures out in public. I mean, they're just so sweet. I want to know what you think, though, because you have a beautiful family. Hey. Yes. And and I don't know if people know how many children you have. Do we have a picture? I have do. seven. You yes. do? Seven. Congratulations. Seven that is little Arsene Mother. Yes, that the is. Canvas. Yeah. 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 <laughs> how do you deal with there they it? Are. You it's guys are really cute. hard. And I think... Honestly, I think Meghan McCain is telling the truth. The hardest part is seeing people say mean things about um, your husband and, and having to explain to the kids that it's not true and, and giving them sort of some advice on how to handle it and, and, and react. And it's really hard. And it takes a lot out of a family, the travel and everything else. Um, it's tough, but I have to believe that Romney knows this. I mean, he's done it a couple times. Yeah, and I would think he's probably consulted his family. Uh, about running again. And, you know, I've said before, I don't think Mitt Romney should run, but there is one positive I was thinking. If he does run, he will keep Jeb Bush honest. Because if he doesn't run, I fear it could turn into a coronation, much like the Democrats do. And I, I do. I, I thought I was thinking about this last night because you know Harris. I've said before, not really bullish on a third run by Mitt Romney, not for the reasons Meghan M McCain mentioned, but just because I do think he'd be able yeah. to really keep the heat on Jeb Bush, or we're just going to be the party of the Bushes, and I'm not sure that's the best thing. Ronald Reagan, though, gave it three steps, right? I mean, third third try is the golden one. So, I mean, you, you look at, at some families that were intact, beautiful families, that they were able to get through it. Yeah, I mean, you've heard Romney uh, supporters make that exact comparison with Ronald Reagan. You know, Mitt Romney said the other day, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that Ann Romney was much more supportive of a third mm -hmm. potential run than his kids were. So I think he's maybe speaking mm -hmm. to exactly the kinds of concerns that we heard. But also, his, from <laughs> I don't McCain. believe that. His children are grown. And, and right. I think, you know, her, her warning is a good one to heed for younger politicians, you know, people like Paul Ryan, who've got young kids, because I think it's a very difficult life campaigning. It's very difficult losing. I think it might be even harder to become president. You know, I, I think it's, it's a very interesting thing, the dynamic of younger children who grow up in the White House. I think that's incredibly yeah. tough, but it's also hard for it to be the child of a famous parent in any realm, whether it's politics or entertainment. I, I think, think what he kid. has on his side is that very they tough. are a tight, close-knit, <laughs> strong family and that's always helpful. Well, thank you for setting such an awesome example because your yes. family is gorgeous and you're a special mom. Thank you. Uh, well, when the football itself, not the play on the field, is the big story, hmm, what happens then? The stunning new allegations about deflated footballs and the Patriots' big win on Sunday. The game that sent them to their sixth Super Bowl of the Tom Brady era. Yeah, it's an era now. Oh, God. Is there a big rush to judgment here? Or could there have been something more to the scandal? I mean, did they cheat or not? You broke my will, but what a thrill. This grace is great balls of fire. I let you love what I thought it was funny. You came along and woo, my honey. I've changed my mind. This world's fine. When it comes to good nutrition, I'm no expert. That would be my daughter. Hi, Dad. She's a dietitian. And back when I wasn't eating right, she got me drinking Boost. It's got a great taste, and it helps give me the nutrition I was missing. Helping me stay more like me. Boost Complete Nutritional Drink has 26 essential vitamins and minerals, including calcium and vitamin D to support strong bones, and 10 grams of protein to help maintain muscle, all with a delicious taste. Grandpa! Stay strong, stay active with Boost. Meet Jill. She thought she'd feel better after seeing her doctor, and she might have if not for Kari, the identity thief who stole Jill's social security number to open credit cards, destroying Jill's credit and her dream of retirement. 
Every year, millions of Americans, just like you, learn that a little personal information in the wrong hands could wreak havoc on your life. This is identity theft, and no one helps stop it better than LifeLock. LifeLock offers the most comprehensive identity theft protection available. If Jill had LifeLock's protection, she may have been notified before it was too late. LifeLock's credit notification service is on the job 24-7. As soon as they detect a threat to your identity within their network, they will alert you by text, email, or phone, helping protect you before the damage is done. And LifeLock offers the proactive protection of bank account takeover alerts. LifeLock's comprehensive identity theft protection helps guard your social security number, your money, your credit, even the equity in your home. Doesn't matter how old you are or how much money you have, identity thieves steal from everyone. You have to protect yourself. I protect myself with LifeLock. While identity theft can't be completely stopped, no one helps protect you better than LifeLock. And LifeLock stands behind their protection with the power of their $1 million service guarantee. You have so much to protect and nothing to lose when you call LifeLock right now and try 60 days of identity theft protection risk-free. 60 days risk-free. Use promo code ONGUARD. Order now and get this document shredder to keep sensitive documents out of the wrong hands. A $29 value, free. Call 1-800-419-8380 or go to lifelock.com slash on guard to try 60 days of LifeLock identity theft protection risk-free and get a document shredder free. Call 1-800-419-8380 right now. Sailing through the heart of cities and landscapes with Viking, you'll see things differently. You'll get closer to iconic landmarks, to local life and cultural treasures. It's a feeling that only a river can give you, that only Viking can give you. Spend less time getting there and more time being there. Viking River Cruises, exploring the world in comfort. Hi, I'm Barry Sloan of Newtech, the Small Business Authority. As a small business owner, you know how difficult getting a bank loan can be. With a simple phone interview, we can pre-qualify you in 48 hours. That's why we're the nation's largest non-bank government guaranteed lender. So whether you need $5 million or $50,000, you can count on Newtech, the Small Business Authority. Call us at 8552-THESBA or visit us at THESBA.com. Pretty poison. I don't exactly know why we use that song because I don't think the Patriots actually dropped anything. Like nothing was falling. They were catching all of it. Uh, the growing scandal, and it is in fact growing, over what is being called Deflate Gate has taken a dramatic new turn. ESPN is reporting that the NFL found 11 of the 12 balls used by the Patriots in Sunday's big win, sending them to the Super Bowl, were underinflated. The league says an investigation is underway. And while we should stress, there are allegations only in this case. This is not the first time the Patriots actually have led by one of the game's greatest... Oh, who Bill wrote Belichick. this? <laughs> you know who wrote it, Jason wrote oh, it. Oh, my goodness. Wrote it. I promised him I'd read it, so let me finish. Go back so I can say that part again so we can make Sirocco oh, happy. mercy. This is not the first time the Patriots, led by one of the greatest coaches ever, Bill Belichick, oh. <laughs> have been accused of cheating. Oh, but we had to add that because that's the fact. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that this is, is complicated, funny. though, because, you know, I'm watching on Twitter after our tea's going into yep. the commercial. There is some scientific proof to the fact that if you inflate these balls with warm air, you take them outside, that you're going to have some deflation because of the cold. So what is your thought? Yeah, that's true. Um, the problem is maybe not as much deflation as we saw in this particular instance. And the fact that there were 11 of the 12, I think, is suggestive. Mm -hmm. But it's important not to leap to conclusions. I mean, I think there's a lot that we don't know. There are a lot of questions we haven't had answers. It would be interesting to see what the Indianapolis Colts yeah. balls mm -hmm. were. Where were, their, where were they in terms of their level of inflation? Yeah, I don't remember what the kickoff temperature was for the Colts game, but I think in this game, what was it like? 51 degrees. Yeah, it was 51. 51. Thank you, Jay Sirocco. By the way, we should inform the audience that we're outnumbered because we have a whole staff of producers. Uh, they're talking in my ear right now. It was 51 Patriots. degrees, Harris. It was 51 degrees. And I would say also, this isn't the first scandal, though. Remember when the Patriots, or I should say the Deflatriots. Oh, yes. Well done. Oh. Oh. I like that. 
that they control room. Watch, they're going to cut my mic. <laughs> they're wrapping us. Remember when they froze the scoreboard at the...